Hello guys! So, as you saw from the demo, today we will add quick and pretty much simple lightning strike to our weather system. It's simple implementation, just to give you the idea how to work with it and how to achieve this pretty much realistic result. The first, I'd like to notice that the first idea was to use the ribbon and then spawn particles with the cylinder location. But for ribbons, when you use cylinder collision, particular how ribbon works, if you try to attach the particle system to your player and go with it, the particles actually spawn in the same position and you need to write the custom Niagara module script that will actually change the emitter position. So the emitter position will be used for the particle position. And when I try to manipulate with the ribbon width and other attributes, I found that it's not pretty much user-friendly and the result that I achieved don't... I, I actually don't like them. So I also very fan of the proceduralism and I saw that if I have made the grass with the simple generated band, so I actually can make the lightning strike, lightning bolt, whenever you call it, with the same technique and use noise to actually transform the simple straight line to behave as the lightning. So here we start. Generated band, it's the default material function. Material, blend mode is set to additive, shading model is unlit. Also, I have unchecked apply fogging and checked responsive AA for better visual representation and to lower overall shader complexity. You can also go with the translucent plant mode. Additive just mixtures the surface which is behind our particle. And I thought that using control here, not in Niagara emitter, will be better. So color emissive simple multiplication to make it more brighter, more glowish. So opacity, as you can see, we have generated band. Static bool set to true, so the direction is from top to bottom. Let me you let me just demonstrate how it looks. And without input coordinates feature here. It's simple straight line. So what do we do here? For panner, I use the vector tool. You can convert it to color attribute and change red and green channels to manipulate the speed attribute. Then I append this operation with zero to actually get the vector three because the procedural noise node here works with the vector 3. Here you can go with any allowed you want. The higher scale is the more frequency you will receive, the more noise it will be on your lightning. Also function, fast gradient is the most 
lower cost than any of other functions so it's obvious choice turbulence check to make it behave more like lightning when you select lower levels you will receive more straight line the high levels the more performance cost it will go but the more freaky results you will receive and here is a tricky part output mean and output max let me demonstrate you what it does so basically if you choose default state from minus one to one you'll receive well, you actually can see it here I need to adjust the width a little bit to see the mask so by manipulating the min and max output we actually decrease the repeatedness or the areas where our noise is applied so basically if you go with minus 0.5 and 0.5 our mask will be less um it less repeat it repeats less or yeah less times so if i go and change it to something like this you'll see that now it will look more like the lightning so even if i go with these small values now you'll see the result and adjust the width to perform as the lightning something like this sharpness go with any amount of you what you like because it depends whether your lightning bolts are going to be cast in near distance or if as you saw also from the demo I use the location mostly on the horizon of my scene to make some sort of heavy atmosphere or at least I like to think so so changing this attribute will actually depend on how your lightning strike will look with the overall emissive multiplicator so the lower values the less glow you will receive the more it will be sharper and the glow will be brighter and actually that's all for my material now to Niagara emitter so what do you need to do first of all it's the blank or empty pattern of Niagara emitter it's CPU simulated because the spawn rate is simple 3 and it doesn't take much um, resources to go with the CPU instead of GPU simulated you can you actually don't need to change the bounds of the particle it's only for the GPU side next for the emitter state loop duration set to 2 the lower value is the more times this particle will spawn also I'll, I have used cylinder location 
height is set to 1, so my lightnings start from the same position on the z-axis. Cylinder radius is set to 75,000, and because it's the radius, so the full area that it covers is 150,000 units. So it's basically the area that the old Unreal Engine's Sky Sphere was covering. I also use offset on the dead axis for 5000 units in the local space, so it puts my lightning higher and you need to adjust this attribute so the lower end will actually need to touch your ground. Also, I use surface only band thickness and uncheck use and caps in surface only mode to have some sort of mask where I have the width like if we have two spheres the big one and the smaller one and we subtract from one from the big one the smaller one we will receive this sort of buffer where we need to spawn our lightning strikes and the area where inside these two spheres where our player is so there won't be any lightning strikes it's particular for this feature that I I am showing you next in the initialized particle I have a random range float from 0 0.25 to 0 0.4 and the uniform sprite size set to 10,000 units because my lightning strikes are on the horizon so if you need to make them closer to your camera just change this attribute you need to actually play around with this one and these values this and particularly this one and for sprite renderer it's my material. I actually create the material instance of this one and put it here. So basically, it's very light and it also uses, if I'm not mistaken, the cuts out on the opacity. Um, yes, opacity channel. So, as I mentioned earlier, or, or if I don't, my lightning strike is dependent on the weather changes and particularly on the cloud opacity. If you haven't seen the tutorial on the volumetric clouds, you can skip this step, but if you saw it and you want to integrated to the weather system. This particular cloud opacity vector curve vector asset where I have the red one or x axis is for the stratus clouds and the green one is for cumulonimbus clouds. And cumulonimbus clouds are, if I'm not mistaken, that sort of cloud that actually can produce some thunder and rain. So, all I need to do in the weather system, in the update weather function here, right before the rain starts, because we can actually have the lighting without rain, is to perform this logic. So everything is simple. Everything is on the curves. But don't forget to create the lightning component here. Set Noyagra system to use to be used here and also set to auto activate to be unchecked. And one more thing on the event graph right after 
check player ready where we have all our components attached to our player character we need to attach the lightning component to our player character with the default settings so when we move around our particle system will move will move with us next or back to our update weather function so i use cloud opacity curve and get vector on a particular time so here and check and here i check the condition whether the return value of y axis is higher than 0.5 also play around with this value so it means if my so actually it means that on the whole day, I guess it will it will be without any sort of lightning, and where it's nearly two o'clock, it will start spawning lightning strikes, and I guess around seventeen o'clock or five p.m it will stop spawning the lightning strikes so simple activate or deactivate here well it's pretty much simple as i told you before the next time i will add some sort of light so we actually need to fake the behavior when the lightning strikes some area around the clouds need to be lightened and here i stop my tutorial please leave your feedback also leave your requests i hope you like what you saw it's very useful very simple performance friendly and see you soon.